And, and I want to talk about our spiritual senses being awakened. Last week, we launched a series called A New Day. If you were here, uh, raise your hand. Did you enjoy that? Amen. It was a word uh, about a revelation for us to just be free from the lies of the past, the lying whispers that tell us we're not enough, the lying whispers that say we're going to be abandoned again, or whatever it is that the enemy has tried to grip our hearts and our minds with. If, if you weren't here, you can listen to the message online. You can uh, listen to it on our YouTube channel. But I want to jump into the next phase of this, and um, there's a few scriptures I, I wanted to read, and I, th I think I want to start in Mark, I'm sorry, not Mark, um, Matthew, uh, and, and I want to start in Matthew chapter 17. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. Um, I have a real Bible this morning. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that such a beautiful Bible? It's, it's the third edition of the Spirit-Filled Life Bible, and I didn't realize it was going to be this fat, but it's like a very fat Bible. Um, and uh, so praise God, there's a lot of good stuff in here. But I want to start reading from Matthew chapter 17, and this is the account uh, that it's in the Synoptic Gospels where Jesus goes to the Mount of Transfiguration, and, and he comes down. And I want to talk about what happens as he comes down the mountain. And particularly in this account, there's something uh, that's really profound here. And this is where we have the story where Jesus comes down. And one of the synoptic gospels says after he comes down, they're arguing. The, the teachers of the law are arguing with the disciples because the disciples couldn't cast out a demon. And then the disciples are upset and they're like, Lord... How come we couldn't cast out the demon? And then Jesus says, oh, that's because uh, I pray and you don't. I'm paraphrasing. Um, some manuscripts say that these only come out by prayer and fasting, but it's not really found in most of our original manuscripts. It's possible uh, that there's a reason that it's not in most of the manuscripts is because we would start forming some religious formula to have more authority when authority is a free gift that we just yield to. And, and so it's important that we don't think, well, if I fast and pray enough, then God will. Um, and, and I want to talk to you today about uh, awakening. And this scripture, um, this story here in the Gospels is, is very profound. And then we're going to jump uh, to two other scriptures, one in Hebrews and then one in James. All right, y'all ready? And so let's, I just want to read here. Uh, let's go ahead and read it from verse, this is Matthew chapter 17. And let's read verse 14. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he's an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long will I bear with you? Bring him here to me. How many sense a little frustration in the Lord's voice right there? And how many know he's talking about the disciples um, and their lack of ability to walk in the authority that Jesus gave him. And it says here in verse 18, and Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him. I love the next verse. There wasn't anything uh, that had to happen. There wasn't like, you know, this 40-day uh, prayer and fasting thing that the, the disciples and the multitude had to do before Jesus could accomplish something. Come on, somebody. I, now, I'm not opposed to that. I, I believe that that helps posture our hearts. It helps clear our spiritual ears. I do believe that fasting should be a part of the new covenant Christian life, but not in an old covenant works mindset, but in a mindset where it helps us like, all right, and in some churches, a lot of churches, and it's been the way for a while of the struggle church to have like a time of fasting and prayer in the beginning of the year. And I'm not... Uh, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying do it right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Don't do it from this religious thing where it's like, well, if I do this, then I'm pleasing the Lord. No, you please the Lord when you know that you're his child and you hear his voice saying, this is my beloved child in whom my soul delights and whom I'm well pleased. 
And then once we know that we're sons and daughters and, and he's smiling at us, then we can go out and please him. My kids don't please me by trying to uh, get me to smile at them through works. Like they got to take out the trash and do it. They, they get, I'm pleased when they come before me and allow me to love them and receive my favor and my love and my presence. And it's the same concept in the Lord. And so uh, the next verse, Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out. And the child was cured that very cured from that very hour. Then the disciples are like, Lord, how come we couldn't do this? What is going on? How come it didn't work? How come when we prayed, nothing happened? Hello? You ever been there before? How come when I prayed, I didn't see it happen, Lord? And there, there is a cry from the heart of even you and I at times in our life where we wonder, sometimes we ask why, when there is no really divine why, sometimes there's a why, sometimes there's things the Lord will reveal to us, and it's usually alignment, though. It's usually not some sort of, uh, uh, you know, thing that we come up with in our archaic religious minds, things that have been entrenched in us uh, through fallen humanity and archaic religion. You know, we think that we have, if we sacrifice enough to the Lord, then he'll give us breakthrough. I believe that Jesus' sacrifice was more than enough. And the sacrifice of our life is what he wants. And so the disciples in frustration, how come we couldn't do it, Lord? Our prayer didn't work. And then he says, it's because of your unbelief. He says, uh, I love this, man. This is so good. If you have faith like a mustard seed, as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Then he says, however, this has not come out except by prayer and fasting. Um, now we're going to stop there for a minute. We'll jump back to this. But I want to I talk to you about this, this story and the concept of awaken. You know, a lot of times when we talk about living a spirit-filled life in the Lord, and, and I, I'm not saying this in a way like we don't do, th we do this really well, okay, what I'm about to say, we do this well. When we talk about awakening our spiritual senses, usually the first thing that comes up in our minds usually is like uh, being able to prophesy and declare what the Lord is saying, or being able to see and have prophetic vision. How many know what I'm saying? Like, have you ever heard a message on awakening of your spiritual senses? And it's usually related to the prophetic or to seeing in the spirit realm. And I believe all of that. But how many know there's other spiritual senses? And the Bible talks about that the, those that are mature exercise their spiritual senses and they discern what is of God and what is not of God. And there's a rebuke that the author of Hebrews lays down, and he basically says, you should be teaching other people, but you need to go back to the elemental principles of the faith and drink milk again because you're not listening. I'm paraphrasing. This is Hebrews chapter 5. And then he says, having your senses exercised. Now, what's important is that we realize there's other senses that God wants to awaken. Amen. Like, I want my gift to prophesy to increase. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I want my gift to be able to see and discern to increase. I want the other senses that God has given me to increase. But one of the things that we forget is we can't speak unless we hear. Right. Right. And one of the senses the Lord wants to awaken within us is our ability to hear. Man, I, I mean, him who has ears, hear what the Spirit says, pun intended. <laughs> Many times you see this repeated. You see it through the book of Revelation when Jesus is writing to all the churches. And, and it says, let him who has ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We need ears to hear. And so the Lord is awakening his kids to listen and to learn to be teachable. You know, I, I, I thought about the book of James, and I'm going to jump to a verse in James in just a moment. Maybe the one you're thinking is the one I'll talk about first, which is to be slow to speak and quick to listen, right? How many know that's a good word? Amen. Uh, I, you know, I spent my, um, my growing up in faith in the Catholic church, so I didn't really go to church often. Some of you have heard that, but... Uh, 
I'll be brief and just telling you, I got saved when I was 17. And, and then I went to a church that was more word of faith. And so my prayers went from a pre-rehearsed you know, prayer that didn't happen very often and didn't really happen out loud to a prayer that's like, okay, um, I'm spirit filled now so I can pray in the spirit and I have a prayer language, but I also can shout to God. And so my, my, the culture of the church culture where I learned how to pray was, uh, more of the charismatic church culture, kind of like our church right here. Um, the church that you are sitting in right now. And, and so, and it, and it wasn't bad. It was good. It was like, I learned, I learned how to take authority. I learned how to make declarations. Come on, somebody. I mean, I learned, and I literally just copied people like in a good way. Like I imitated them as they imitated Christ and I, and I gleaned, but there was a particular stream of faith, a spiritual stream that I drank from. And, and for a while, and I, and I walked in it, like I lived in it. I listened to teachings on prayer and I love to pray and I, I, I would pray, but I found myself drinking from a stream that I thought was the river. And what I didn't realize is that there's other streams in the body of Christ. Thank God for spiritual fathers and mentors that lay down a rebuke in your life every once in a while. And my spiritual dad says, you, son, you need to glean from the larger body of Christ. Amen. And I'm like, the larger body of Christ? What do you mean? I, I, know, I know the word. I don't, I don't need to glean from nothing. You know, that's my maverick mentality, right, that comes out. And, and I began to open my heart to see that the stream I was, I was messing around in was not that deep. It was a little shallow, and it was not the river. Amen. I learned that actually if I... If I only knew of this stream that actually my senses were dulled and I wasn't able to hear, glean, receive, or yield to the other beautiful things that God wanted to bring into my life that could only come later when I opened my heart and I learned that he wanted to awaken my ears to hear and he wanted to open my heart to yield. See, when you have ears to hear, your heart is yielded. And there's an awakening that goes on. There is a, there's a process. I learned, um, thankfully, from a Bible study teacher, my first encounter with him was I was a little bit more on the arrogant side. And I, I picked apart everything that he said. And I was 18 years old just because I'd memorized a bunch of scripture and I knew how to pray. I thought I knew everything. And uh, God humbled me and he taught me to yield to a teacher and a mentor in my life. And every Monday and Friday night at this Bible study, we would study the word and we would pray from about 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Sometimes it would go on to 10, 11, 12, 1, 2 in the morning. And we're talking about like a lot of teaching, but a lot of prayer and just the weighty presence of God. And I remember going from the stream of when we would like if someone asked me to pray, man, I could just go, bam, I'm praying. Father, I thank you that you are the God that heals us. And, and I would just pray. And, and I think the Lord like had a gift in me that was developing, but God taught me not to be presumptuous. He taught me to slow down. He taught me to listen. He taught me to yield. And in this Bible study, I remember, this is the only way I could describe it. I, I remember sensing a deeper well. And my Bible study teacher, his name was Phil, and uh, brilliant and very anointed. And we would open up in prayer, open up in song. It was the type of environment that if somebody was there, a smaller group, nobody was really leading, per se, worship, but someone could just sing out. And maybe they had a song in their heart, and, uh, and we would just make melody to the Lord. And sometimes, sometimes the presence of the Lord was so thick it was like we couldn't speak and it was holy and it was like the Lord saying, I know you've had some experience in this stream, but I'm taking you into deeper waters. It kind of reminds me of when I was a kid and I don't know if this is common here or not, but I grew up in Denver, Colorado as a young person. And I remember um, when there was nothing to do and it was raining outside after the rain, all of the water that flowed in the gutter, to me, that was like a river. And then I got a little wood chip and, that, and we used to like race boats down the gutter. How many know what I'm talking about? 
And I felt like, not in a bad way, but like the Lord's like, you, you've been playing around in this shallow water and it's good, but I'm taking you to some deeper waters and I'm going to teach you to learn, to listen, and to yield to my spirit. Because where I want to take you, you have to be sensitive to my spirit. I think so many times when we come into prayer, we come in with our senses dulled. Especially, and, I, and I, listen, I, I'm not... I, I am charismatic to the core. I love the gifts of the Spirit. We need them. And we need to walk in them. If, if you didn't hear the messages that John preached, John Lampanero, you have to go back and listen to them. If you're hungry for the gifts of the Spirit, so important. And we're going to continue on that journey. And we need to receive all that God has for us. But as we do, we have to remember we should stay yielded to the giver of those gifts. Amen. And not just take the gift and become a clanging symbol. And so I've learned that as, as uh, I yielded my heart to the Lord, the Lord, he, he spoke to me, he says, I'm taking you into deeper waters and where I'm taking you, you need to learn how to be sensitive and yielded to my spirit. And I'm thinking of this story and I, I want to read, let me just read to you and then we're going to jump back to the gospel story. Hebrews chapter five, I'm going to read it to you in the New Living Translation and, and man, I, I, this is, I'm preaching to myself here. Here's what the author of Hebrews says. And, and the thought is a call to spiritual growth. There's much more we'd like to say about this, but it is difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. I knew I wouldn't get a lot of amens on that verse right there. I just knew it. <laughs> You've been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. He says, you're like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. And the New King James, it's that phrase, having their senses exercised, are able to discern both good and evil. Having your senses exercised. I want an awakening of my spiritual senses. I want to see, I want to be able to speak, I want to be able to feel, I want to be able to touch things in the spirit, but I also want the heart that is yielded. I want the ability to, to, like, it's not hard for me to receive. Amen. It's not hard for me to ask God, Lord, teach me to listen before I run ahead and start shouting in the spirit when I'm starting to pray. I think it's so important as a church and befitting for this series, a new day. May we step into a season where our hearts are awakened to yield to the Lord. And this rebuke in, in the scripture here in Hebrews talks about the exercising of our senses, the awakening of our senses. Can you say amen? amen. In the book of James, um, of course, in chapter 1 is where we hear the, uh, or we see the scripture that says, be slow to speak. And then James in chapter 3 talks about the tongue and uh, no man can tame the tongue. And, and how many know the analogies that he gives? It's like a rudder of a ship or it's like a, the tongue could be like a, a, a little spark that causes a forest fire. Like our words are powerful. Yes. And we can either speak life or death. And, and then he says something here that's so profound. And he, the, the writer, uh, James, in verse 13, it's heavenly versus demonic wisdom. And let me just read from verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. One of my Bible study teachers used to call the book of James, cut the crap. I mean, James is just like, he does not mess around, dude. I, it's, uh, it's pretty strong. He says this... Wisdom does not descend from heaven, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Wow. Verse 17. But 
the wisdom that's from heaven. Can you say that with me? The wisdom that's from heaven. This is one of my memory verses from years ago, and I'm still unpacking it and chewing on it and receiving the wind of the Spirit from the Word. Capturing the Spirit of the Word. The wisdom from heaven is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Amen. Isn't that powerful? Yes. Lord, I want to be pure, peaceable, gentle, and willing to yield, full of mercy, fruitful, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. I want to walk in heaven's wisdom. This line here, willing to yield, I believe that when our hearts are awakened to the Lord, it's not hard for us to receive. And of course, in this context, it's about one of the uh, translations says, easy to be entreated. It's like you don't have to convince somebody. They're just, okay. And of course, in this context, it's about good wisdom and truth. Like there are some things we shouldn't be easily swayed by. Hello? Lies, things in the culture of the world. But how many know when the Spirit of God, when we have... Uh, when we have an awareness of what's of him and what's not of him, our hearts should be yielded. I, I've learned to get around people that have yielded hearts. I've learned to get around people and pray with people that are yielded and empty because when we're like the disciples, when our prayers don't seem to be working, it's possible we're just playing around in shallow waters and the Lord is calling us to go a little bit deeper and realize the stream that we've been running in is not the river in the body of Christ. And there's more for us, church. There's more the Lord wants to call us into. And I love where we're headed. I love where we're going. I love who I am in the Lord. I love who you are in the Lord. I love who we are in the Lord. But the Lord is calling us into deeper waters. And I'm telling you right now, just like the disciples with their frustration, how come our prayers didn't work? And the Lord says, it's because I pray and you don't. It's because I'm yielded to the Father. That's why I walk in this authority. In the very humanity of Jesus, he's, he's yielded to the Father. He does whatever the Father, he sees the Father doing. Jesus demonstrates this concept, this principle, this reality. When the centurion just says, just say the word, Lord, and my servant will be cured. And how many know Jesus says, I was a astonished at this faith because he understood the concept of authority because someone is yielded to authority they walk in authority and sometimes we're running ahead of God and we're wondering why we can't move the mountain and Jesus is like slow down and listen be someone who is a person of prayer don't forget that we should dwell in the secret place not visit the secret place but dwell in the secret place we should be a people of the wind of the spirit yielded and and our hearts just open. God, what do you want right now? We want to hear the sound of your voice because one word from God will change my life forever. And even if it's a gentle whisper that says everything's going to be okay, that's more than enough, God, because I, your words are spirit and life to me. And I don't want a old manna. Come on, I don't want stale manna. I want a fresh word from God. And the story in the Gospels, one of the most profound things that I see is not just the lesson of the disciples. Sometimes we think that's the lesson of the story. And it's one of the lessons of the story. But I don't think it's the lesson of the story where the disciples learn. Jesus is like, you need to learn how to pray, y'all. You need to learn how to yield your heart. You need to learn how to surrender to the kingdom reign of heaven. And when you do... Casting out spirits like this won't be hard, but you'll just be able to do it as you declare freedom over people's life. But one of the most powerful lessons is found in the very beginning of the story. It says that there was a man that knelt down before him and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. See, when our formulas don't work, bow and kneel before Jesus. When our prayers don't quite work, and something's off, yield, bow. Easy to be entreated. Lord, I kneel. One man 
kneeling before the Lord. The lesson of this gospel story isn't just the lack of faith of the disciples. It's the lack of honor and yieldedness and desperation that this man was willing to throw himself at the feet of Jesus. I want to be awakened with ears to hear and a heart that quickly will run to come before the feet of Jesus. I believe a culture, what this looks like, and it's not a religious exercise, but for example, like if we are a church that worships freely the way we do and the altars are open, then it looks like people worshiping at the altar. They're, they're not afraid to step out. Well, that's not normally what we do. Well, it's okay. Like we, we can express our love to the Lord or maybe we don't usually bow down, but well, maybe there are times we just need to get face down before the Lord. Like maybe we need to step out of the shallow waters and ask God to take us a little deeper. And I believe that this is what the Lord is speaking to us today, that there is an awakening. And it comes when our senses are exercised, but it's not just the sense to be able to see and prophesy and do all these wonderful things, which I do believe we should do and get better at. But how many know you can't speak rightly if you can't hear rightly? And I want ears to hear. And I want to learn an even greater sensitivity to the Spirit. I want to, I want to have a heart yielded. Like if my wife or my kids or anyone, hey, can I pray for you? This is what you see, a posture, a willingness to yield because that's the wisdom that's from heaven. Anything else is not. And there are times, of course, you know, I'm not saying let anyone pray for you. I'm saying when it's God, be willing to yield. Be willing, learn to receive, learn to honor and receive from heaven and have our senses awaken. Can you say amen? amen. I want to close in prayer. And in just a little bit, maybe we can open up the altars and just worship and prayer team, be ready to pray for people. But if you want to just come up and worship, that's okay too. I sat in Zach's office this week and uh, I got a vision of him, a, a, a word for him. I shared it with you. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a Zach Wexler word. I saw this beautiful steak. And I saw this seasoning being sprinkled over it. Like they season steak now before you pan sear it. Beautiful steak, marbled, dry aged. <laughs> steak. I'm sitting across from his desk and I'm seeing him become like this steak, like you see in the cartoons, steak. And the seasoning is being sprinkled over it. And being prophetic, I always begin to ask questions, Lord, why am I seeing Pastor Zach like this? And he said, tell him, get ready to be eaten. Tell him, get ready to be eaten. And it wasn't a bad eating like ravenous wolves or something like that. Amen. It was a beautiful steak. It was a, an incredible meal. And in that the body is going to begin to eat him, consume him. What we heard here today, Matthew, Hebrews, James, those are not easy verses. And we need to be willing to consume what he just gave us. Now I'm speaking to us in Counter Church. We have to be willing to feed on this stuff. These were not easy verses. You, you, You know, you should be eating meat, but you're drinking milk. And why couldn't you cast these demons out? Jesus laid into his disciples. He laid into them. This is not easy, but we need to feed on this. This is important for us as a church to feed on these messages from this man at this season. This is important for us. Amen. Thank you. Let's just open our hearts to the Lord and close in prayer. I want to, actually, I'm just going to open the altars. If you just want to come worship down here and pray.
And we'll dismiss those that want to be. Maybe you're just in your heart. Lord, I want to yield. Teach me to be sensitive. Just come. I want my senses awakened. I want to be, Lord, I want to be easy to be entreated. I want the wisdom from heaven. Just come. You can kneel before the Lord. Just turn your heart and affection to him and just let him do what he does. Let him speak to you. Sometimes the reason we can't hear is because there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of static. So just dial in and listen to the still small voice. Surrender your life. I want to be sensitive to your spirit. We love you, Lord. I don't want to be numb. I want to be able to sense when your wind is breathing, when the wind is blowing in a room. Cleanse us, Lord. Wash us. Wash us from spiritual leprosy that numbs our limbs. And Lord, we don't, we don't want that. We want to be whole. We want to be whole. We pray these things in Jesus' name.